As the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan continue, we're learning that a large number of troops are turning to medication to deal with the stress of battle. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin reports. Each year, between 20 and 40 soldiers are evacuated from war zones for mental problems brought on by combat. A much larger number stays in the battle with the help of medication. A recent survey found 12 percent of soldiers in Iraq reported taking either antidepressants or sleeping pills. That works out to about 19,000 soldiers, half of them using antidepressants. We are in new territory, an army psychiatrist says. Never before have antidepressants without serious side effects been available to soldiers facing repeated combat tours. Starting in the late 1980s, antidepressants that did not cause dizziness, drowsiness, and other complications began to come on the market. Then came Iraq and Afghanistan with their multiple combat tours and demands for increasing numbers of troops. And the Pentagon approved prescribing drugs like Zoloft, Prozac, and Paxil for soldiers who otherwise might have to be evacuated from the war zone. Post-traumatic stress disorder has become one of the signature wounds of this war. Now antidepressants are emerging as one of the signature medications. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. And joining us is Paul Rykoff, Executive Director of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans for America. Good morning. Good morning. Harry. So this big front page uh, uh, cover uh, issue of Time magazine last week with a big pill on it. And this was one of the big revelatory articles that sort of has raised awareness of this. What was your, what was your thought when you saw it? Well, my initial reaction was that it was is trying to explain to America how much stress our folks are under. Uh, this high rate of, of the use of antidepressants and sleeping pills is really just a symptom of a deeper problem. We're sending folks back over and over again in a tremendously stressful environment and it's taking its toll and, and the antidepressants and sleeping pills are one way that the military and the individuals are trying to meet that threat from your experience having been over there talking to veterans who are coming back day after day after day is this a good idea you know, there's a lot of debate about that right now. I think what we need to look at is, is how to reduce the overall stress. And that starts with reducing the deployments. They only get about a year home. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for if an that. Home, if that, right, doing a 12 to 16-month tour. Right. Uh, we know that about half a million folks have been to Iraq more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're going back over and over again, and that's why we're seeing the suicide rate in the Army. Right. 115 folks in the Army committed suicide last yeah. year. That's the highest rate since 1980. Mm -hmm. So we've got to look at those other factors that are causing the stress, right. in addition to the violence, in addition to the family stress, and all all that other stuff that piles up on yeah. the troops. Because the other thing we know is the, the the chances of PTSD are probably what somewhere about nine, eight, or nine percent on a first tour. Right. But it basically doubles on a second. Right. Triples on a third. Right. Quadruples on a fourth tour. Some of these people have been over there two, three, four times. Yeah. This is, sounds like a, a, a very bad recipe to me. It, it is. It's simple supply and demand. We continue to increase uh, the demand on our troops, but we haven't increased the overall number of troops dramatically. Mm -hmm. There was an Army Ranger who was recently killed on his eighth tour. Hey. So folks coming home uh, are at risk of about one in five are going to come home with post-traumatic stress disorder, severe depression. There was a big study from the RAND Institute a few weeks ago that, that confirmed those numbers, and we need more supportive services both when they're in the military right. and especially when they come home. Is there enough support? Because in this Time magazine piece, it indicated that sometimes these people are getting the prescriptions based on practically over the phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get to a doctor when you're in a war zone. With the recent surge, we increased the number of troops uh, by about 30,000, but we didn't increase the number of mental health care workers. Mm -hmm. So we've got to increase the number of folks in the field. We've got to get them to a doctor more often. And it's really hard when you've got to go get your prescription check, when you've got to go across the country or across your sector in a very dangerous environment with the roadside right. rhymes. It's a very dangerous recipe. And if you're on that stuff when you're in the combat zone, what happens when you come home? No, that, that's a good question. I mean, they've got to have follow-up. The VA has a very long wait time right now. Hundreds of thousands of claims are backed up. The average wait time is about 183 days to process a claim. So we've got to do a better job at the VA when they come home as well, because that's when most folks are going to show that they have a mental health problem and actually seek out treatment. Is this a gross overstatement, but are Prozac and Zoloft the marijuana, what marijuana was to Vietnam, are, the, are these things to... I don't know if it's the same. I think it's definitely a Band-Aid solution. Uh, we're continuing to send folks over and over again. This is one way for the Army to keep people in the fight. We know that recruiting numbers are stressed, retention mm -hmm. numbers are stressed, and this is one way for the Department of Defense and the Pentagon to keep people on the front lines. But there is a long-term cost for the military and for the individuals. Yeah, yeah. And a, a cost that uh, it seems like the country is not really aware of and re ready to pay yet.
No, they're not. I mean, this week in, in, in the House and Senate, we're going to be fighting for a new GI Bill. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a critical way to take care of these folks when they come home as well. And we've got to pay up and take care of our veterans when they come home. All right. Paul Rykoff, always a pleasure to see Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thanks for coming in.